All right, we shall uh, we shall begin, and today we are covering chapter six. Okay, and this is all about uh, probability distributions. Okay, specifically. the normal distribution and the binomial distribution. Okay. So last chapter we covered, uh, in chapter five, we covered rules of probability. Okay. And we said, you know, if we know this about certain events and stuff, we can calculate the probability that, uh, that this event will occur and whatnot, okay? With, um, in chapter six, we are still dealing with probability, but now we are dealing with what we call a probability distribution, okay? And, uh, and so here uh, we have what we call a random variable And a random variable is basically the result of a random experiment, but that random experiment is recorded as a number, okay? Result of a random experiment. And the result is recorded as, as a number, okay? So for example, just, you know, other simple random variables, we could have, uh, you know, the outcome of a die roll, okay? And so the outcomes are recorded as numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? And so these, these are uh, the outcomes of a die roll. And if we wanted to graph these, okay, we can create a probability plot, okay? And we would look up the associated probabilities. Okay, so the outcome one, what, what is the probability of rolling a one on a die? One out of six, right? All of these, their associated probabilities are all gonna be one out of six, right? Okay, and so the probability plot looks like this. These, uh, along the x-axis, we put the outcomes, okay? And then along the y-axis, we put the probabilities. Okay, so somewhere along here, we're gonna mark off one out of six, and we look at the outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And technically, you know, the numbers keep going, but our probability plot, basically says these are the only possible outcomes, okay? So you just have dots to indicate the outcome uh, for each of these is one out of six, okay? And everywhere else, it's zero. Okay, so these are, this is the outcome, this is the associated probability with that outcome, everywhere else, it's zero. Okay, is this display okay? All right. Um, so this is a, this is a simple random variable. This is what we call the a discrete random variable. Discrete meaning um, only certain values are allowed. Okay, not using discretion. That's not the different. That's a different type of discrete. Okay. Um, 
So this is discrete random variable because only certain values are allowed. Uh, again, if anybody has uh, arrived late and does not have a probability table, um, please come forward and grab one. They're available up here at the stage. Uh, these probability tables, these uh, reference tables that you have, these are for you to keep and to keep safe, okay? Um, you will need these for uh, future quizzes and tests and whatnot. So, uh, so you know, make sure you, you have these. Yeah, question? Yeah, I'll I'll post a, I'll post a digital copy as well on online, and that way, if you misplace this, you can uh, print it out. Okay, so this this one is free, <laughs> all right. And if you lose it, you're responsible for printing it out yourself. Okay, don't don't come to a section next week because you'll have a quiz next week that's going to make use of these tables. Don't come to section next week and say I lost my table or I forgot to bring my table because you'll be in trouble, all right? So, so it's your responsibility to make sure you have this, uh, especially for quizzes and test days. And if you happen to lose yours, I'll, I'll put a digital copy up online that, uh, that you can print, okay? All right, so these are your, um, so this is a discrete random variable, okay? Uh, what we are going to focus mostly on in this class will be, um, well, at least in today's section, we're going to be talking about the normal distribution, okay? And so, uh, so another example of a random variable. So remember, the random variable is the outcome of a random experiment, a random trial, where that number, where the outcome is recorded as a number, okay? So here we can say, um, you know, select a uh, random adult female, okay? So we're going to select a random adult female, and then we record this person's height. Uh, in inches. Okay? All right, and so what we're going to see is that, you know, common, um, common values will be heights like anywhere from 5'3 to 5'6, probably, okay? 5 foot 3 inches, so that's 63 inches to uh, 5 foot 6. 66 inches, these will probably be uh, very common. Okay, and then, um, you know, uh, still, still common, but not as common. <laughs> How do you say that? I don't want to say less common, because less common sounds like it's rare. Uh, <laughs> I'll say almost as common. <laughs> Almost as common will be something like, you know, five foot one inch to um, uh, five, five three, and then, you know, five six to five eight. And then, you know, less common would be, you know, I don't know, four ten to, to five one. Okay, and then just on the opposite side, it would be, you know, five eight to uh, six one or something like that, okay? And then, you know, and then relatively rare would be heights, you know, below four foot 10 and above six foot one, okay? All right, and so to display something like this, okay, along the x-axis we have, you know, our outcomes, which in this case is the height, right? And we can kind of just mark off 
you know, what, what goes in the middle, I'm going to put something like uh, 5 foot 4, okay? And along the uh, vertical axis will be our associated probability. And what we'll see is that, you know, around, bless you, uh, around the, the middle, around 5 foot 4, these are quite common, and so the associated probability is quite high. And as we uh, move further away, uh, our picture looks something like this, okay? And so this is to say, you know, from 5 foot 3 to 5 foot 6, these values you know, are up here, these are common, right? Because this is high probability, and down here would be low probability. Okay? And as we uh, move further and further away from that, You know, this would be, you know, 5 foot 1, 5 foot 8, something like that. These are almost as common, so this kind of, this region. And then 5, 1 to uh, 4, 10 to 5, 1, something like that. This would be four foot ten and this would be less common. And then out here, this is relatively rare. Does that, does this diagram make sense? Okay. So here, this is kind of what the normal distribution says. It says values in the middle. So if, if we say the average height of an adult female in the United States is around five foot four, and it's something around there, give or take half an inch or so. If we say the average height is around five foot four, then what we have is these heights around 5 4 so you know 5 3 to 5 6 or you know plus or minus a little bit more or less these are quite common okay as we go further and further out the the um, frequency of those heights goes down okay until we're uh, a decent distance from from that average height of 5 4 okay and so you know, relatively uncommon or relatively rare would be heights below 410 or heights above 6 foot 1, okay? And, uh, and so that's, that's kind of what we have, all right? So this is still a probability plot. This time it's continuous because someone can be 5 foot 4, okay? And if we had a very accurate ruler or a way to measure someone's height, someone else could be 5 foot 4 point one one six inches, okay, and someone else could be five foot four point one one eight inches or something like that, okay. So, you know, if we had a very accurate measuring system, uh, anybody can have any height up to an arbitrary number of decimal places. So, so this, uh, so we've got this. So this is a continuous thing, and so you're going to have this this curve here. Is that uh, is that all right with you guys? Okay, so um, when we look at the, uh, the normal table, okay, what we often, um, our, our normal distribution, we're going to be dealing with what we call the standard normal distribution. Okay, and the standard normal distribution is centered at zero. <clears throat> okay.
okay? And if I shade everything, if I shade everything underneath the, uh, the curve here, okay? So I guess, uh, I guess I'll do it. Uh, so if I shade everything, the total area shaded would be one, okay? So if we shade everything, So if we shade everything, the total area is one. And technically, it goes off to negative infinity and goes up to positive infinity. But really, once you go out beyond four, it's, uh, you know, or even three and a half, um, the, the line is so close to zero that a lot of times we can just kind of ignore the value. It's, it's, you know, very, very, very close to zero. So a lot of times we just ignore it. Um, okay, so let's say, so just let's check our understanding here. And I, and I think we do. Um, oops. If I draw a vertical line at zero, okay, and I shade everything to the left, How much do I have shaded? This is supposed to be an easy question. So you'd say 0.5, right? So the shaded amount is 0.5. Okay. Well, we can the we have um, what this table does. This table tells us how much is shaded, okay? And what you do is you look up where you're drawing your vertical line. And so uh, when we look at the table, if you flip it over to the, this side of the table, you'll notice that the, uh, the top left corner, it, it looks like this. Okay, and we see that this value right here says when z, basically where our vertical line is, when z is equal to 0, 0.00, okay? So vertical line at zero, that's the same as 0, 0.00, and we know it's 0, 0.00 because it's the intersection of 0, 0, 0.0 and the column 0, 0.00. When z is at 0, 0, then the area to the left is equal to 0 0.500. Zero. Zero. That's what this that's what this says here. Okay. So the table always gives the area to the left. Now, um, this is this is just something that kind of annoys me. Do not please do not write 0, 0.00 equals 0 0.5000, okay? This is, this is not correct. Zero does not equal 0 0.5. What you can say is that probability that z is less than zero is equal to 0 0.5000, or you can just say 0, 0.00 leads to area equal to 0 0.5000, okay? These ones are fine, but this one, this one is a no. Okay, this is okay, and this one's okay. These are okay. All right. Okay, so, um, you know, what would happen if I... Um, are, are we okay with this? Okay. And then so, you know, just to kind of, whoops. What did I do? Let me 
just go back here. All right, so let's just try a few, uh, few practice drills here. Um, so the way, um, so the way this works is, you know, if if I draw a line, let's say at z equal to, uh, z is equal to zero point seven eight, okay, and I shade everything to the left. How much is shaded? How much is shaded to the left of 0 0.78? Oh, well, that's a coincidence. <laughs> okay, so the area is equal to 0.78. Two, three. Okay, now it doesn't always work out that way, um, where the area is very similar to the Z itself, um, but that's just what happened in this case. Okay, so I'll say uh, the green area is 0 0.7823. Is that, is that good with everybody? All right. Um, what if I uh, ask you how much is shaded in yellow? Well, here, maybe, maybe I'll just back up. Just in case you didn't get z is equal to 0 0.7823, we went to the row 0 0.7 and the column 0 0.08, okay? And the intersection of 0 0.7 and, uh, and 0 0.08 at that location gives me 0 0.7823. Okay, so this is our z table. Okay, well, how much do I have in yellow then? Yeah, so what we do is we know the total area adds up to one. So, you know, right, so the green plus yellow must add up to one. And we know that the green is 0.7823. So plus 7823 plus yellow must add up to one. So we get the yellow equal to one minus 0.7823. So a lot of you guys got that, and we have 0 0.2177. Is that okay? All right, now here's a little trick that you can do, okay, is that if someone asks how much is more than um, z equal to plus seven eight, okay, well, the table is, the, uh, the distribution is symmetric, okay? So if I look up negative 0.78, the table, the table always gives us the area to the left. Okay, so the normal distribution is symmetric. So the area to the left of negative 0.78 is the same 
It has the area to the right of positive 0.78. Okay? So if, if someone asks how much is shaded to the right of positive 0.78, you can take a shortcut and just look up the area to the left of negative 0.78, and you'll get the exact same answer. Okay? Now, if you're not comfortable doing the shortcut, you don't have to. Okay? You don't have to. You will always get the right answer by finding the area to the left and then subtracting that answer from 1. Okay? So you'll always get the correct answer this way of 0.2177, but if you're feeling comfortable with this flip-flopping around, you can look up negative 0.78 negative 0.7 and you go to the column 0 0.08 negative 0.78 and you get 0.2177 okay and we get so that's the exact same answer here are we good there okay so let's uh, um, I guess I'll make up a clicker problem here um, is too easy. Okay. What do I have? Fire up our clicker app. What's going on here? Okay, all right. So the clicking's going away. We'll say uh, just a few more seconds here. And okay, I'll call time here. All right, let's see what happened. Okay, and the correct answer is D, indeed. Okay, so again, uh, You know, you look up z equal to negative 2.06. So what that means is you're in the row negative 2.0 and the column 0 0.06. And uh, the intersection at that number is negative 2.0 and the column 0 0.06, 0.0197. Okay, that's not the answer because the table always gives us the area to the left. Okay, so the table 
always gives the area to the left. Okay, and what we want is the area to the right, the green shaded area. So this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.0197, which is 0 0.9803. Okay, again, uh, another option would have been to look up positive, positive 2.06. Okay, positive 2.06 would have given you 0 0.9803, and because the area to the left of positive 2.06 is the same as the area to the right of negative 2.06. So the correct answer is this. Okay. Are there any, any questions or, or issues? The uh, answer choice C, which seems, uh, you know, maybe just a couple of you uh, messed up, um, that is the answer associated with 2.6, okay? So 2.06 and 2.06, I mean 2.6 and 2.06 are not the same, right? So this is uh, not z equal to negative 2.60. So these are, these are different, okay? So don't, don't do that. Okay. Uh, let me, um, Some numbers on my calculator here for the uh, this next problem. Let's see if uh, let's see if we can do this. All right, I'm going to um, draw a line. This is at z equal to one, and we will say z equal to negative one. And I'm going to ask how much is shaded in green. see what answers I can put here. Let's, uh, let's see if you can figure this out. Okay, so uh, looks like a lot of you guys are getting your uh, clicks in. So we'll say uh, we'll say until one minute. So I guess uh, ten more seconds at this point. You guys excited for the Super Bowl? Maybe. What? Who do I think? Yeah. Uh, I I gotta go Car Carolina. Huh? I don't know. It's a it's a toss up. I think uh, I like I, I like this uh, site. What uh, five thirty eight? They do uh, good statistics, in my opinion. Uh, they got they got Carolina fifty nine percent. So let's see what happens. Huh? Well, anyway. And then uh, and then if you're following politics, you got the New Hampshire primary, and then uh, and. And if you celebrate Chinese New Year, what is it? Year of the monkey? Yeah, okay, I don't know. All right. Um, okay, so our answer, 
What's going on? Here we are. And that is the correct answer. Okay. So uh, what happened here? So you looked up z equal to negative 1, probably, and you got 0.1587. OK? That's the area over here. OK? So by symmetry, we also know this is going to be 0.1587. All right? And so what we have in here is going to be 1 minus 2 times 0.1587. And that gives us 0.6826. Is that okay? And, uh, and it seems like a lot of you guys got that. All right. Do you guys remember the empirical rule back from chapter 3? Yeah? Okay. So, so chapter 3, we had the empirical rule. And what did the empirical rule say? It's... Yeah, it said 68% are within what? One standard deviation of the mean. Okay, and then we had what? 95% within two standard deviations and 99.7% within three standard deviations of the mean. Sounds familiar? Okay, this number 68% is coming from the normal table. So if we write z equal negative 1 and z equal plus 1, and we ask how much is shaded in between z equal to negative 1 and z equal to plus 1, you'll get around 68%, 0 0.6826. Okay? If we did the same with z equal to negative 2 and z equal to positive 2, you'll get an answer that's very close to 95%. And if you did the same thing with z equal to negative 3 and z equal to plus 3, and you ask how much is in between, you get 99.7%. Is that, is that okay? So, so the empirical rule, this is based on the normal distribution. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue on here. Um, here, we'll do, uh, we'll do one more of these. And this time, I'm going to just make it uh, ever so slightly more interesting. So we've got z equal to plus 1. And here I'm going to go to z equal to negative 1.52. And I'm going to ask how much is shaded, shaded here. OK. So the green shaded area. So I could say this is also uh, negative 1.52 is less than or equal to z, less than or equal to 1. Hello. Uh, OK, so the hardest part is always making up fake answers. <laughs> Um, okay. All right. What do I have? Okay. See what we get. Is this running? All 
All right. Well, it seems like you guys are picking up on this very, very quickly. Um, so that's, that's great. Okay, well, uh, as you guys are clicking in your answers, I'll illustrate how we are to solve this. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll click stop there. We'll look at our answer choices, if this works. Okay, and the answer is uh, indeed answer choice D. Okay, all right, so let's see um, how this works, okay? So basically what I'm doing <clears throat> is I'm saying this green area is the same thing as this purple area minus, and, uh, and if I take a, a line all the way down here, uh, this actually, I should uh, go right there and shade there. I'm basically saying um, so the green area equals uh, magenta minus blue. Okay? And so magenta is going to just be the area <coughs> to the left of positive 1. And then blue is the area to the left of negative 1.52. Okay? So the area to the left of plus 1 is 0.8413. The area to the left of negative 1.52 is 0 0.0643. And that gives me 0.7770 in between. And, and can we uh, can we see that that to get the area in between here and here, uh, we just do this little uh, little operation. Okay. Alternatively, I guess we could have found the area to the right of this and the area to the left of this. Uh, it, it would have been the same, okay? We could find the area to the left of negative 1.52, the area greater than plus 1, and subtracted both of those pieces from 1. That's another way to do it. Uh, you would have gotten the same answer. Okay, um, we also have what we call the inverse reading of the table, okay? And I think, you know, you guys, you guys are doing a great job. Okay. So this time, I'll just draw the picture, and I'll say, uh, give me the answer here, OK? So I'm going to say I have shaded. This is 90%, OK? So the shaded area is equal to 90%, or you know, very, very, very close to it, OK? You know, where did I draw the Z? Okay, and so your answer choices will be da, 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 da. So we'll, uh, we'll run this. Maybe I should write as close as possible.
right, just a few more seconds to get your clicks in. Okay, so I'm going to uh, hit stop here. And let's see. Okay, all right, so uh, we got uh, a few, few people. Uh, the correct answer is B here, okay? And so when we are doing the inverse reading of the table, okay, we are given an area. So in this case, the area given is 0.9. Man. Uh, okay, and so we go to our table and we're looking for the area that's as close to 0.9 as possible, okay? And so we see a few candidates, okay? Uh, and I listed off 1.3, which is 0.9032, which is pretty close to 0.9. But if we look at 1.28, that's 0.8997. This is even closer to 0.9, okay? So the two numbers, 0.9 is Please uh, just hang on for a second. I know it's 450, but uh, just hang on. So uh, 0.9 is in between these two numbers, okay? It's in between 0.8997 and 0.9015. So in this case, you just pick the number that's closer. So this one's off by 15 ten thousandths. This is off by 3 ten thousandths. So we're going to say 1.28 wins, okay? So the, in the table, the, uh, the area, the, the value closest to 0.9 uh, in the area is equal to 0.8997. This, the z corresponding to that is 1.28. Now, uh, a few of that, a few of you, um, a few of you looked up, mistakenly, you looked up z equal to 0.9, okay? z equal to 0.9 will give you this, but this is not what we're looking for, okay? We are looking, according to the picture, we are given the area and we want to find the z, okay? So in some situations, you are given the area and you want the z, and in other situations, you're given the z and you want to find the area. So, um, so make sure you don't mix those two things up, okay? And so in this case, when we ask, you know, what, what is the Z that corresponds to a shaded area of 90%, that's going to be 1.28. Okay? All right, we'll, uh, we'll end there. Uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you guys on Monday.